this Frenchman who actually was active in Denmark. And he was born in 1720 on the, on the 22nd of March. And that's the reason we talk about him today, Nicolas Henri Jardin. Uh, let's uh, see, Nicolas Henri Jardin, a neoclassical architect, <coughs> was born in Saint Germain de Noyer, department Saint -et Marne in France, <coughs> and worked 17 years in Denmark. <coughs> as a, I'm sorry, my, my, my voice uh, <laughs> seems he wants, wants to leave me, as an architect to the royal court. He introduced neoclassicism to Denmark. Here he was. He seems like a nice man in this painting. Uh, so he was French, but for 17 years he worked in Denmark. <clears throat> he also uh, drew a lot, uh, designed a lot, uh, but we'll see some buildings by him. The Yellow Mansion in Copenhagen, 1764, 1766, 67. Um, and kind of yellowish indeed. Uh, let's see, what, what can we say? It's a mansion, yes. An urban one, not in, in nature. Uh, neoclassical, let's, let's not be too surprised because we already know he was a neoclassical architect as opposed to Kenzo Tange, who was not a neoclassical architect, far from it. Anyway, <laughs> this is Copenhagen, this is Denmark. And this is Monsieur Jardin, a Frenchman who worked in, in Copenhagen. Interior work at Christian Borg Palace, also mid 18th century, especially decoration of the Great Hall, which burned down in the fire of 1794. So I don't know if there are pictures now. Redesign of the Fredensborg Palace, garden and park. Um, Nicolas-Henri Jardin. He was an architect, but his family name, as you know, means garden, Jardin in, France, in French. Interesting thing, no, to be an architect, but your name to be garden. Imagine a gardener whose name, family name was building. John Building, for example, or I don't know. Anyway, a different time, of course, the 18th century, Copenhagen, and, uh, you know, uh, not just in within the city. A nice palace, actually. And I like this uh, marriage between, uh, you know, a generous geometrical, symmetrical scheme and some rurality because the buildings are, you know, just uh, some of them are one floor, the others two floors high. That's it. Very well kept otherwise. And the octagon, of course, the courtyard, the magical octagon. The one beloved by Leonardo da Vinci and not by just by him, of course. Redesign of summer residence at Bernstorf, Bernstorf Palace, again, mid 18th century for the foreign minister, uh, Johan, whatever the name. Um, now, of course, Kenzo Tangi, if he lived in, in Denmark in the 18th century, he would not have built like he built in Japan in the 20th century. That's why, as Maria Olbrich said, and it's written on the facade of the secessionist building in Vienna, to each time it's art and to art it's freedom. You cannot be like this, you know, in the 21st century or in the 20th century, but in the mid 18th century, of course, it was very possible. Uh, redesign of a castle, again, uh, Nicolas Henri Jardin, the man who brought neoclassicism to, to Denmark.
as I said, this presentation and the next one are rather short compared to the one by uh, on uh, on Kenzo Tange. And I'm happy it's not too long because I'm beginning to be a little bit tired. Um, anyway, it's good, I think, that we attempt to, to say happy birthday to Nicolas Henri Jardin. I am far from being an expert in, um, you know, neoclassical Danish architecture. But there is something Danish about these buildings. Of course, I know that they are built in Denmark. But I, even if I didn't know, I think I would have said that it must be somewhere in, uh, in a Scandinavian country and probably Denmark. 